Hello and welcome <clears throat> to another edition of Motor Capital. Looks like I'm running a little hot there on my clock and I like to maintain accuracy. I like to remain in sync with the rest of the world, or at least New York. Now I set it back a few seconds because the camcorder clock runs hot and over time it'll just be dead nuts right on. So I was checking out the moon and we had a full moon on July 23rd at 10.37 p.m. So that was the end of July. This, this footage was from a few, uh, last week. Almanac.com. I like this site. Uh, you can get a lot of moon information, too. It rises in the east and tells you the uh, illumination, and then it sets in the west. 11.13 in the morning, yeah. So that's what it looked like at 6.35 in the morning. Uh, a quick look here at the um, the flower bed and... The sun was rising there, so rising there, and then you could see the moon on the west side. My bear was not impressed, Marty. And the food um, there is okay in the bird feeder, so they're good to go for a while. And I'm in the flight path for Detroit Metro. And people always, NIMBYs, say not in my backyard kind of thing. But that's something I actually enjoy. But some people don't like the noise and whatnot and feel not in my backyard. But yeah, there's the airport right there in the city of Romulus. It's surrounded by the city of Romulus. I highlighted the Ecorse Creek or river, depending and it starts in Romulus, then it goes through Dearborn Heights pretty good along the Van Bourne Corridor, then into Allen Park, then by the Giant Tire, right where my fingernail is. Then it goes through Allen Park, Lincoln Park, E-Course, and between E-Course and uh, Wyandotte, and it spills into the Detroit River. So yeah, I like this map. So there's a north branch and a south branch. The south branch is here, and they call it like a drain. But this one, you don't hear about flooding that much. So I'm wondering, the runoff from the airport, yeah, through the city of Taylor, you don't hear much. Last few storms, we didn't have a lot of, it was north of Michigan Avenue, so they didn't get hit that hard. But there's a lot of runoff from the, the runways. So you, people speculate maybe they pump water and it comes down the creek, so we got to keep an open mind, keep them honest. I live where that star is up there, so I'm just like eight blocks north of the creek. I live in Dearborn Heights there. So, yeah, the Ecorse Creek, this is like urban planning too, figuring out what we do, uh, water retention ponds, that kind of thing. They talked about one to be at um, Inkster and, and Powers, but it's like a 10-year plan or something like that. It's like, what? Uh, they need that like yesterday. So, but yeah, to be continued definitely as far as the uh, Ecorse Creek or Raging River. The Olympics were going on. That was exciting too, and that's on NBC. That's just fascinating. Now, I got that bird feeder up, but here it must be a neighborhood cat decided this is a good place to kind of relax and keep an eye on things. But he didn't know the bird feeder looks pretty empty there. Uh, there's a few birds, but yeah, a white cat. So yeah, he's out patrolling the neighborhood. I filled it up now, so... Look, a bunny rabbit off. It's not really in focus, but yeah, on the neighbor's yard. Now the cat changed it. Oop, I'm looking through the screen, but it changed its position. Better look at the feeder. 
All right. There. He's ready. Or she's ready. My flowers. These are wild flowers. And so uh, they're colorful. They, they're like fireworks. Who would have thunk that I would have gotten into flowers? But then Calder Dairy. Look at this. Locally bottled. They're out in Carlton, Michigan. I meant to check their farm out. This is part of the urban planning, too. This is the, the flooding on Acorns Creek again. Uh, we could just maybe one, two uh, sticks of dynamite, one for each tunnel. Poof. And, yeah, the flood plain is up way up there. And it reaches the fence line over there before it spills out onto uh, Euclid Avenue. It looks like the city maybe, or beavers, chopped down some trees to kind of make the flow a little better. So that's important. Looks like some wildlife there, just guessing. A woodchuck or ground chuck or... All right, so, yeah, right here they get a lot of water. <laughs> It just floods here all the time. So, yeah, they don't really need this bridge. It's being used as a parking lot for people that work at the nursery there, I think. But they don't need... It's an exclusive neighborhood here in Allen Park. This was all ponded. This was like a lake. So think about building a berm or something and, and doing a little dredging, maybe even put a little walking path. Kind of do like the Edward Hines thing, you know? When you get a lot of rain and stuff, you use it as a flood basin. When it's not flooded, then you have a, a, a trail where you can walk and see Mother Nature. Maybe even a bike path or something. Figure something out. It looks great, all the nice greenery and stuff, but this bridge here, they probably, it's two sticks of dynamite, too, for this. There's two tunnels. It goes under the road here. Just poof. But this is kind of, there, there's more traffic on this street. Uh, so this, the neighborhood would have to figure out what they want to do. They could take that house down because it it's all laked out here. So here's, yeah, you see the uh, northeast, southwest direction there, but... It's surrounded by 94 Southfield Freeway and West Outer Drive, so it's a little triangle. Interesting neighborhood, but it's, that's urban planning too. Thunderbowl, I'm out this way because I want to check. A, well, I'm doing a big Ecorse Creek thing right now, so just took a little side trip. I'm going to get into a Tiger game here in a little bit, but here uh, behind Thunderbowl, and the Los, Los Arcos, we'll see that in a little bit. But here, uh, the Ecorse Creek slash river is, is moving slowly. But that's never good when you have tree blockage like that. That ends up kind of damming things up. And then, looks like senior housing here, I can't be certain. But I wonder if they get water in their lobby, because they are real close to the creek. So they did some work. I don't know if it was the county uh, collaboration, uh, state, federal funds, how they did it. They put some nice rocks here. Look at this nice concrete uh, underpass they have for the uh, Ecorse Creek slash river. It's a river, certainly, when it's in the flood stage. Right here at College in Allen. So they did this work last year right in the middle of the pandemic and thunder bull lanes they were i think the top the most lanes anywhere in the world and now they might be down to number three i'm not exactly sure where where they are toledo road gosh there's like dix avenue dix road oh this tires this is not cool yeah definitely stop doing that but yeah i I had seen this from before, and this is the Ecorse Creek where it goes by uh, Dick's Toledo, or whatever you want to call it. But somebody decided, hey, uh, these tires, I don't need them anymore, and I guess I have to pay to take them to a scrap yard. I'll just roll them into the creek here. And so that's just lovely. 
and then you can you're you're probably just and then go inside and have a beer yeah i think they just backed up and just rolled the tires in there ha 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 oh i hate people that litter like that oh who's supposed to clean up after you now Ugh. yeah my lord but yeah this is right behind uh business stretch here toledo and west outer drive then just they got to keep this clear too that helps to clear the debris i don't know if it's the individual cities their department of water and sewage or whatever um but yeah you got to keep all that drainage clear and then people have to stop littering too i know some of that's they just well people litter but yeah we need that don't need that now this if you're a criminal i'm thinking of using this as a halloween costume it would be pretty easy you just get a black cape you got a cool uh hat like that and then maybe make a button with that cross thing and yeah that's what criminals look like in lincoln park apparently that's what you should look for okay as promised the Tiger game, they're playing the Orioles. This is the Negro League's weekend. So I always make it a point because they always have a great promotion. There's the giant tire. All right, and then I'm going to have a show that I'll do in a bit on the murals. There's a blackout art mural festival. But anyways, I, um, I'm going to get sidetracked. I'm going to go to the city of Hamtramck where the factory zero is and so veterans memorial park this is i'm going to do a little walk through here so i'll get to that tiger or um, detroit stars game against the orioles shortly but here this is a historic site like re do some speed reading that's a wolverine <laughs> hamtramck stadium Well, that had some, yeah, historic. That's got some history, yes. Look at their park benches also have the name. Well, here we're going to check out the stadium, and it's in the process of being renovated. How cool is that? Yeah, I wanted an update because Jack White put some money up for this, and it got a lot of ballyhoo, but then other people antied up. And figured out, yeah, why as a city, why don't we do something with this? This is a Detroit Stars hat from a previous game. They had those promotions, and uh, you'd get a baseball hat. And, yeah, we need some stars of Detroit. So, But look, they did a lot of work on the field. I think way off in the distance, that's a prison. So you got a clear shot of that. But, yeah, look at the field. It's nice. And then... Keyworth Stadium, that's where the Detroit Football Club plays. And they did pretty good. They won the championship this year. So, yeah, some real football, and they won a championship. The Lions haven't done that in a while. 1957, before I was born, that's on my bucket list of things to happen. And when he's... Just check out the back of the stadium here. It's fenced off and so forth, but you got to watch your step because a lot of wood needs to get, you know, needs to be replaced. So Isaiah would say, look up, but in some cases you have to look down. But look at the nice field. Wow, this is incredible. Last time I was here, I didn't even know where home plate would have been. I mean, you can kind of guess, but I didn't know the field was that far out. I don't know how they figured the the dimensions and so forth, but the grass wasn't cut or no, nothing. It was all lumpy. And look at that. They got a nice uh, infield there. 
Yeah, this is in Hamtramck, Veterans Park, right by the rail line, the Conrail line there, just north of the assembly plant. Now, they have, like Tiger Stadium, you get, you get seats where you'd have blocked vision. So I don't know if they're going to discount obstructed view kind of thing, but some people will have to live with that. But this is a cool-looking stadium. Could you, like 8,000 people or whatever, maybe you'd have bleachers yet on the side. They have a mini, ooh, good save there, uh, a mini soccer, but you can play it off the boards. That would be interesting. It's probably also used for other things too but yeah they just replace some wood they say by the end of this year this thing will be up and at them can you imagine watching a game out here hell yeah go stars yes indeedy hey norman turkey stearns played here and a lot of all stars did actually this is uh the fair foul line uh, there were some people actually working uh, on the field. Out here is where the center fielder would have to play if I was up at bat. They wouldn't want it to go over their head. But they have no wall over here. It's just kind of like the old days when you played as kids, you know, you hit it as far as you can. That ball would just keep rolling. It's up to you to run and track the ball down. There's no wall to go over or something. And you get to try to home run out. Oh no, you're you're running after the ball, you throw it in, you're gonna have a play at the plate or whatnot. Not no easy home run where it just goes over a wall and you can trot around. Hell no. That's how we did it like grassroots style in the hood. Uh this is Keyworth Stadium. And I'll show the um the kind of like the keystone or the mem memorial marker. Built in 1930, Federal Works Project. But yeah, they won a championship, and it looks like they serve booze here. How about it? Create or die. Yes, indeedy, you have to be creative. That's a good thing. A very good thing. Right now, they're going to have a game later in the evening or late afternoon, kind of like a practice thing. But right now, it was kind of, this end was closed up. But I went to one of these uh, football games slash soccer games, and the crowd is what you come here for. But uh, what you're in for, yes, mature language, yep. Periods of heavy smoke, loudness. But then what's forbidden? Yeah, so there's lines you can cross, so as long as people are aware of that, not a problem. So have fun and don't be an idiot. That's easy enough. Just use common sense. But usually people kind of tell you. Um, but they have a riot. They do. R a riot in a good way. They're just, they have all their songs and so forth. They probably have overflow crowd, you know, the main seating but because the visitors wouldn't come that much, I'm sure um, they get fans on both sides. But look, nice picnic tables. I'm going to have to come to a game, but everything's going like post-pandemic. It's just opening up again. Okay, let's see, 1936, not 1930. And then what did they do here? A gridiron floodlighting. Yeah, nice. This is one of the first places, I guess, that added the lights. And they're patriotic. It's good. And then back that here, rededicated in 2016. Yeah, well, it, it helps to have the, the Detroit City Football Club. They've done the city proud. Look at the uh, stadium seats, the steps. So it's a... Uh, I like the design and the, the Keyworth look there. And an auto zone nearby. It just gives you an idea of some of the homes uh, in the area. Then uh, plenty of murals, but this one was kind of nice. It's uh, highlighting here the spirit of Detroit with an air vent. They snuck that in there. 
And then we got a goalkeeper making a save over here, saving the planet. Then another mural here, like a city there. And then I'm not sure what this flower is, but it's colorful. Looks like a mushroom, sort of. And then the headdress. And then coexist. What's that all about? Like, we can't have none of that. Plus, we can't have no diversity either. We're all the same. No, hell no. We're as diverse as they come. There's the promised land, Comerica Park, where those lights are. And then behind that was Ford Field. And then the other two major sports, hockey and basketball, play at Little Caesars Arena. So all within eye shot. But I always park for free in the MGM Grand Garage. Sometimes DET.com is the website too. And then this church was going to get moved because Comerica Park was going to be behind the Fox Theater. And then they did the old switcheroo. And of course they were buying land on both sides or communicating with the city. But they put it on the other side. So the church stayed. Now $20 parking if you want to pay. But it's just like walking two blocks. No big thing. You're only young once. Now the town pump crossed the street. They used to be there. Now they're over here. And they have live music. I did not know that. All right. Well, Woodward Avenue. This is uh, Main Street, Detroit. And there's the Fox Theater. And then this is uh, fairly new, the Little Caesars World Headquarters with the pizza slice windows. But here we go. Now we're, now we're talking. Tigers with the baseballs, and this is the pre-game crowd. And with the promotion, the gates open an hour and a half before game time. So a 6-10 start. So they open at 440. Couple, well, Cabrera is getting close to 500 home runs and 3,000 hits. So this is gonna get scant. And here's the promotion, yes. Comerica Bank, kudos to them. It's the Fedora hat. Sweet. My, well, my ticket was 20 bucks, so I get to see a game and I get a hat. And then Ernie, most beloved, he was most beloved. This guy was great. Oh, I can't tell you how many games I listened on the radio. And, and he always had so many stories. Such a nice guy. Oh, classic. We were lucky to have him in Detroit. We were lucky here with the Detroit Stars. And this looks like it's new. Unless it's uh, temporary, I don't know. They got a QR code there. So some of these people had roots with the... Detroit Stars. I told you about Turkey Stearns. Here we go. Love that nickname. I think it was because the way he ran, if I'm not mistaken. Not like a physical feature or nothing like that. He just. But I'm trying to wonder what running like a turkey would look like, but I don't know. Just saying. Um, here, well, the matchup, and they're getting ready. Uh, Dan Petrie getting fitted with the microphone there, but it's Bally Sports. That takes a while getting used to. But uh, Willie Horton, let's listen in here a bit. About what's going to go down in here, Trent. You've got to tell this audience what that breaking news story was just two days ago. Yeah, the Tigers uh, put in their press release for the April League's weekend that the funding is complete for the restoration of the Hamtramck Stadium Grandstand. The Tigers contributed, uh, along with uh, Wayne County, contributed $850,000, and the Wil Ralph Wilson Foundation, the Kresge Foundation, the National Park Service, or an African American Civil Rights Grant. Construction is going to begin very soon. It will be done by the end of the year. And next spring, probably in April, we'll have a game of baseball with people in Negro League uniforms on the field for the first time. 70 years, maybe? Yes. Big round of applause. Can't wait to see it. All right. Question? Well, first of all,
first of all, you know, I'm very thankful that uh, when I left high school, Northwestern High School, I knew that I was on the way to, I knew what I wanted. But, you know, when I experienced, and I talk about my first year in Lakeland, Florida, I had to walk five hours, five miles to spring training. I couldn't ride no taxi. That five miles helped me grow what I'm doing now in life. It taught me beyond the field as a person who I am, so I can try to make a difference who's behind me. But that five miles and getting involved with integration, that baseball that I helped beyond the field, that not only through integration, but through the Ernie Howell, George Kell, and Hank Greenberg, and people like that, taught me more about Jackie Robinson and this man behind me, what they went through before me, and these people in the Negro League, what they established to make it possible for all of us. So I'm just very proud to just be sitting here, because the journey you're on, we still got a long ways to go. Uh, we got a long ways to go. And uh, my job with the Tigers and other jobs with the commission office, I fight every day and for the, our grandkids, our great-grandkids, and you folks' grandkids for the future. All right, boys. But more chips and pops starting for just $69. To purchase oh, that was well said. Uh, a practice going on now. Here, uh, made in China, 200 pieces a box, but a well done thing. The hat is awesome. You'll see plenty of people walk wearing them as I'm walking around, but it's a styling hat, all for the price of a ticket. My ticket was 20 bucks, so I'm figuring that hat is worth 20 bucks. Well, a hot dog will set you back 550. Now, 1901 Society, I think that's season ticket holders and I don't know if like half a season or a quarter of a season or a 20 game or 40 or however they divvy it up I don't know but you get cheaper prices and then when they have a fountain here and this plaza was just like semi open and uh, the Ferris wheel was down and it's only two dollars that's a hell of a deal now cash only seems weird because uh nowadays people want to not do cash but uh yeah the ferris wheel was down that would have been a good thing or a prop for ferris bueller's day off but food's a big part of this too and like I would just go for the onions and green peppers kind of a thing. Mm-mm. Probably not. Well, the vegetables are healthy, but it's probably the grease that it's in it. But mm-mm. Like a steak and cheese sub. The D, even on the GM World Headquarters, that's pretty sweet. And then a nice, beautiful stairwell. And then Ford Field out yonder. And there's a lot of hopes for the Lions with the new coach and this, that, and the other. Uh, but we'll see. They have a tough schedule. Yeah, I looked at their schedule and I think I was a little generous on... Uh, what I considered were possible victories, and I said, geez, best, best case scenario, seven and 10, right? They play 17 games this year. They have eight home games and nine away games, so they get screwed on that right out of the gate. Of course, next year we balance out, but this year, nine away games, and at best, I think they'll win seven, so. And I think the National Prognosticators, somebody had told me like five. <laughs> so they don't expect much from the Lions this year, but who knows, they got a new coach and if the coach rallies the troops. All right, this, my evil twin said, yeah, okay, this will work. This is where my seat was. 
kind of like a Bob Euchre seat, but in uh, left field instead of right field. So yeah, Negro Leagues weekend. The unfortunate thing was the players didn't wear the old school uniforms, which are so fucking rocking. Cool uniforms, yeah. I mean, the old English D looks good, but uh, the Detroit Stars uniform, they would wear it that one day, and it, they would kick ass. It just seemed like they always played well uh, wearing that uniform. Here's another look at the hat. This is a well-fitting hat. It was, oh, I felt like I made out like a bandit. Here's the double street lamp model here, and there's plenty of models in the city of Detroit. This one, they get somebody's, these people are into 420, apparently, whatever that means. Uh, here's some prices again, Modelo beer. 80 degrees, yeah, and we're in sync as far as the time goes. Uh, I wanted to be a, a few seconds slow because my camcorder runs fast, but I don't think anyone will flip out with a few seconds here or there. Here's uh, Cab Cabrera, the sign, so 497. Um, so it faces both ways, too, and they have a special person that would be ready to, to change those signs, lickety split, and then the hits there. Um, so that probably brings some fannies into the stands. Here's Willie Horton. Yeah, back in the day when I was a kid, he was one of my favorite players. The Gator was, too. He'd be a pinch hitter, and he'd always come in and hit a home run, like, every time. It was so cool. But now, 1968, what a magical year. Uh, I was eight years old, so, yeah, it was perfect baseball age uh, for a championship. I couldn't tell you how proud I was in Detroit. It was like, ah. Uh, here in Al Kaline, he was another one of my heroes, a complete superstar. Plus, he didn't have a major league ego. He was just the coolest. He turned down like a $100,000 contract, thought that was too much money. Or maybe it was 120000 and he took 100000 But nowadays, people quibble over millions of dollars, not like tens of thousands. Hey, concert. Always rocks. But yeah, that's that, the Tin Roof. That's a great bar. And it's right next to the Central United Methodist Church. Like they share a wall. That's diversity. You have a bar and a church together. Go figure. But here, let's listen in on this. What's so
there's a local place too. Taste the difference. And this is on Novi Road in Northville. I was just up in Northville the other the other day. That'll be another place to stop off and visit. It'll be Virgin Territory. Michigan and Trumbull. That's historic territory. Look. And then it started out, this is a progression here, but this a portion of that kind of reminds me of the Hamtramck Stadium. Then it went from that to Briggs Stadium, and then from that to Tiger Stadium. And then I love the city in the background. Look at the crowd, too. I don't know if this was the last day or not, um, or if it was just a normal shot. I'd be a bleacher creature. That was the, the ticket, that was the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> saw a lot of games and I still play that game I always go for the cheapest ticket price and then walk and sit wherever I want but that's another story but look at the old scoreboard here that's cool with the light bulbs and all that I don't that's probably redone but to have the original I think they sold some of those artifacts from Tiger Stadium um, it'd be interesting to know now this game officially starts at 6:10, so there was a line still queued up and then look at the local beer uh, Wolverine Irish Hills you know, they're fancy names <laughs> look at the alcohol content <laughs> but and then this historic I love the old Tiger Stadium that's probably redone too but the original, oh, yeah, as a kid, that's, that's what you saw. Tiger Stadium. Uh, game on, so shortly, 6-11. Uh, and so there we go. Then, well, I'm, I'm going to walk around a little bit, but here's outside. This bar is kind of like hidden, the corner bar, I think, and... Uh, um, and paper straws that they're pretty sturdy though here's some fans waiting to uh, going to and fro there's the penobscot building the david stott building is some cool architecture in Detroit, uh, most definitely. Here, a quick look at the lineup. Miggy is batting cleanup. And uh, the fan, fans are still making their way inside. I'm way up there, 345. But uh, this is the whole seating map. Oh. <laughs> Those are tickets I bought at the advance window for an upcoming game against Boston. And because they weren't premium seats, uh, the, um, the ticket price was $10. So that's nice. I can do that. There's no promotion, but still, I can do 10 bucks. And then they'll be happy because I'll spend money on other things while I'm at the ballpark. The marketing gimmick is to get people in the seats and look at the Corvette there on an angle. Orioles have a runner on second, but yeah, they needed to have their old school uniforms, the Detroit Stars. Maybe it wasn't in the budget this year. Or, I don't know, maybe, uh, uh, maybe the Baltimore Orioles didn't have a Negro League team. I could be wrong on that. A lot of times they play Kansas City or Pittsburgh. But yeah, the nice green grass, and that's the Detroit Athletic Club, and they have a nice like penthouse level there where you can sit out in the sun, and then you can overlook, so they don't even have to pay for the game. They're like, I don't know. There should be a tax or some kind of law but no, it cost a lot 
to be a member of that club. I think you have to get invited. And then not only that, you have to be wealthy. Here, 1901 Society, I'm not wealthy enough to get season tickets just quite yet. But, yeah, you, there's the Hudson Towers. That, like, I'm a kid at heart. That's like Tonka toy truck stuff. I'm telling myself I have to get down there and just see what's all happening. 313 Taco Company, and this is their menu. And they were busy as all get out. There was a super long line. There's the Pepsi porch. That's a, a youngster type area where the younger people can fraternize. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll do a 360 around the stadium, which is great. You just have to keep moving. If you want to sit down every now and then, you can, but. Um, there's so much to see. Plus, baseball lends itself to uh, kind of relax because there's those in-between innings. Seven bucks for a pepperoni slice and then a whole pizza, $13.25, which actually seems like a, a, a real good bargain, um, even though prices have gone up. That's one thing that uh, is, is affordable. A hot dog is <laughs> Let me get that hot dog price back up there. All right, and then the almonds. This you can't smell, but the smell is just really phenomenal. And they got the lights on. But uh, we had a good, pleasant evening. This was like perfect summer weather. And a nice catch made out there in left field. There's Paws, and he's a fan favorite. Uh, people love him. He's very photogenic, too. I don't know if you have to pay extra to sit up at the rail or not. They call them EUVs now. Instead of an SUV, it's an EUV. How clever. My evil twin is waving, but yeah. So here's the, the scoreboard, and Miggy was up at bat. They, I think they already changed the hit. Up one, he had a hit earlier, the first hit of the game. That's a, on TV you never see how separate these, these outfielders are. going to catch that one. Uh, that one was over the wall. <laughs> the crowd was buzzing. Uh, Homer's always uh, gets the crowd going. But yeah, look at the detail on this athletic club. That is sharp. And then Vines. They're starting to grow around here. So there's different kind of vegetation. This is the backdrop for the hitters. And then they have the uh, camera crew out there. But you can catch up on the out of town scores. And then, um, yeah, you get the, uh, the center field look here. The, uh, sometimes it's fun just to get a different perspective. Here, Mickey Lolich. I remember this cat. He was a good tiger. And so, uh, Jack Morris was a good tiger, too. Those are the years he played. Yeah, there's, there's different bars around uh, Comerica Park, which you can kind of duck in and 
get a little shade and you can watch the game on TV and whatnot and you can get something to eat, you can just mix it up a little bit. They still got the whale building going here, the David Broder Tower. And I thought people would hang out on the balconies up there, but maybe it's still early in the evening. I have no idea. Then these are popular. They kind of have an alley here, and they got these um, trolley bikes kind of thing, party, party bikes. People are still making their way inside here at 725. Typical start of a game would be 710. I don't know if that threw some people off. Here you can watch it up on their big TV screens. This is the uh, Pepsi porch. And then they got these relaxing uh, couches and sofas. And then however you like to party. If you like to stand up or you like to sit down. Uh, like they say in the nautical industry, whatever floats your boat. This is like an overhang. So, uh-oh. No, they got him. Yeah, the people watching always nice that's part of the fun of going to the game you're just looking at the diversity of people if everybody was the same as you life would be boring or at least if they were the same as me life would be incredibly boring that's why we like to go with that diversity the masonic off in the distance and then a look at the fox and you can get beautiful sunsets up here from this vantage point but the sun's setting around 9 p.m. these days and um, I didn't intend to stay for the the whole game but I like that upper level row when you get up to this level you get a nice breeze too and you can't beat the view so yeah I'd be hanging out with all these people uh, upper level and you, you get that bird's eye view. It's different than what you would see on TV. But yeah, it's probably going to be a, just a gorgeous sunset. But we're just not going to see it tonight. Little Caesars, their world headquarters. And they're doing pretty good. And then they got the wave going. doesn't look good the Orioles have loaded the bases that's never a good sign it's, uh, there's two outs though so that's not bad we're just down two to one yeah I don't know if you pay for they're numbered the seats are numbered if you actually pay for the seats down there or the free seats are the sofas and whatnot I'm not sure how they do that. This guy's yapping quite a bit about the call. He didn't like that, that strike. chase the starter but a uh, game uh, not poorly pitched so you can't win them all isn't that what they say this uh, handlebar 
thing. They got those things all over the place, and there's just like party groups and whatnot. And yeah, you ju they just load them up, and boy, are those things running around town. There they go. That's just one of them. This, I believe, oxygen tank. And I was ready to do the, the dong thing. It's missing one on, on this side here. But it would have made a big clank. That was for the new millennium. They had that bell. Music hall. The Detroit Opera House. And this is the, uh, the lion. And then unofficially. Can't uh, put that like official thing but that's the uh, stop in the name of love statue oh <laughs> yeah people are ready to party it's saturday night the original detroit style they gotta fix the lights but there you go detroit style and detroit definitely has its own style it's unlike any other city uh, we'll check the time here they're not bad we're kind of in sync this is the e-building I'm not sure what's happening all up there. It used to be small plates, I think. They're not open. Black Lives Matter it used to be 1515 Broadway. Now it's a barber shop. And then this building, check it out. It's hot. It's a hot hotel. And it is. It's one of those boutique hotels. It's called the Siren. The people mover uh, thing kind of gets in the way a little bit. And at night, you probably would see it, although the people mover's not in operation right now. But this building was abandoned for years. And inside, they got the candy bar, and they had a private party. Oh, so I couldn't really, I just got the glimpse of the candy bar. This is the lobby of the Siren Hotel, so I like the lighting. Lighting always adds to a cool atmosphere. But to the second level, welcome to Carl's. This is like a, a restaurant, kind of a bar thing. The guys from New York came here, bought the building, <laughs> has the hotel, and, and is running this place from New York. So they're coming to Detroit to make their money. Sid, I remember this, this thing, production line. What a great shot that was this too one play for 25 cents this is the Wurlitzer and we're in their building I guess maybe their office building but look at the old school like the push button things and this select then you do it by the alphabet and then you got the numbers but one play for a quarter I don't know how this machine worked I thought uh, it wasn't actually playing the record there I think it was done digitally but Still, it looks really cool. Look at the different music you could order up. But yeah, I thought it would pick the record. I, I could not see it twirl around, pick up the record. So it's something else that they're doing there. But. Yeah, these are classic uh, things. So I got a, me a drink and look at the hat. It's not, it, I can go anywhere with that hat. And it looks styling, Detroit style. So um, here's their menu, milkshake. They got different beers, cheese curds with sauce. What else we got? The favorites. So pancakes. So you can do the breakfast. I like the club sandwich. That's probably what I would have gone for. Located in the Siren Hotel, so 1509 Broadway. Look at the lighting. I like this. And then the kitchen's off in the back, so it's the open-air kind of kitchen is really cool. So the flooring, 
Now, the gentleman said, oh, you got to check out these other places. So let me, let me take you down to the stairs here. You can do the speakeasy way of going. He says, okay, go, go down here. Okay. I'll let you go first. So this is just employee entrance, huh? Uh, hotel guests can go this way to the front. Oh, okay. Does that take you right here to the front lobby, like you open that door? Yeah, but we don't, we're gonna go to the back alley, right? Yeah, and you're gonna make it right. Oh, that's a beautiful lamp here. Go out this way. Oh, wow. You have to know it's back here, don't you? Yeah. I love the neon sign. And then this is the Albany restaurant right here. Right here. And you got to enter through here, too? You have to go there to that restaurant. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a high end restaurant there. Uh, this is behind the Metropolitan Building, which is. Uh, open now too, but I remember coming back in this alley. It's just back in the day. Uh, but yeah, the Wurlitzer building was just where we were at. We're going to check out the bar next door, but yeah, this this has come back to life. Jeez, post-pandemic, I got to get out more because this is all like brand new, just the stuff that's happening. That's new over there, too, for me. Here's the front look at the... Um, the building, the Metropolitan. But, yeah, look at the, uh, look at the alley here. I just, there was no, nothing back here before. It was kind of scary. Rats. I'd see rats. Big time. This, uh, I love the, like, the escape hatch the artwork there involved with that. But yeah, the neon sign is really cool. It's a request room. Well, I think that's probably a request for the piano player. And that's probably why they call it that. A duh. But I, I don't know. I'm not musically inclined. I, I didn't get that trait. There's always harmony at this bar. I like that sign. And the lighting is good here too. And the artwork or the glass work the ceiling and it's 78 degrees and partly sunny although it's partly dark too but here's the piano player once I get you if he knows Piano Man. That's the one I would probably request. When I was in college, we always sang that song. I'm sure that's a standard. <laughs> but yeah, there was action going on. It was just exciting. Detroit was alive. I'm uh, good Shinola time. But yeah, look at the cars. Little vibrancy. We gotta love it. Yeah, on a Saturday night. But yeah, there's more younger people living downtown, and that, that helps. They bring that energy. Here's a real speakeasy, Cafe de Mongo's. The only problem was I was running low on battery juice, and it was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. But yeah, they were uh, in between sets, and they were, oh, going to do it up. Right behind the David Whitney building. Hey, and the Jewish people are into diversity, too. I guess this is the only synagogue in downtown Detroit. They got great colored windows. And we got the, and the detour ends. Yeah, we're almost to the top of the hour, and I'm going to end the show. But, folks, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week or weekend, whatever the case may be. Good night.